ओके गुड मॉर्निंग डे स्टूडेंट्स सानिया अनुष्का अंश भार्गवी मानसवी मृदुला आर्या मधु हर्षल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू एंड दिस लेसन द एड्रेस ओके सो द नेटवर्क कनेक्टिविटी इज नॉट सो गुड डे स्टूडेंट्स okay uh, dear students so let's begin um, as you can see here uh, here as you can see like the narrator the narrator that is the survivor of the world war 2 uh, she uh, has given up all her hopes to uh, to see the belongings that uh, of her mom uh, because uh, these belongings are kept in the house of Uh, another woman called uh, Mrs. Doris. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Dorling. Mrs. Dorling. Okay. So, uh, uh, therefore, she has decided uh, uh, to forget these belongings uh, of her mom because these belongings or these household goods of her mom will bring back uh, the fresh memory. Will bring back the memories uh, of her mom. Okay. And therefore, uh, that will give her pain. and you know at heart therefore she decided to sort of uh, leave it okay uh, now you see uh, from here we'll start you get so used to touching all these lovely things in the house you hardly look at them anymore you only notice when something is missing because it has to be repaired or because you have lent it for example again i heard the unnatural sound of my voice and i went on i remember my mother once asked me if i would help her if i would help her polish the silver uh, it was a very long time ago and i was probably bored that day or perhaps i had to stay at home because i was ill as she had never asked me before i asked her which silver she meant and she replied surprised that it was the spoons forks and knives of course and that was a strange thing i didn't know the cutlery we ate of every day was silver okay so is the conversation between uh, the narrator and the girl that is uh, mrs dorling's daughter actually right mrs dorling's daughter Okay, the girl laughed again. I bet you don't know it is either. I looked intently at her. What we eat with? She asked. Well, do you know? She hesitated. She walked to the sideboard and wanted to open a drawer. I looked. It's in here. I jumped up. I was forgetting the time. I must catch my train. She had her hand on the drawer. Like now, the narrator girl wanted to catch her train. right that is why that is why she sort of uh, was hurrying actually because she doesn't want to uh, be there uh, in the house any any longer because that will evoke all the past memories right so that will evoke the past memories in her mind that is why she wanted to leave the station okay and she was uh, uh, going to board the train so let's find out what happens afterwards so i jumped up i was forgetting the time i must catch my train uh, don't you want to wait for my mother no i must go i walk to the door the girl pulled the drawer open i can find my own way 
As I walked down the passage, I heard the jingling of spoons and forks. At the corner of the road, I looked up at the nameplate, Marconi Street itself. I had been at number 46. The address was correct, but now I didn't want to remember it anymore. I wouldn't go back there because the objects that are linked in your memory with the family life of former times instantly lose their value when, severed from them, you see them again in strange surroundings. And what should I have done with them in a small rented room where the shreds of black out paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of cutlery fitted in the narrow table drawer. So what happened yesterday students, you know? At the corner of the road, he, she looked up at the nameplate, Marconi Street, it said, and uh, the number is, uh, house number is 46, the address was correct. But now I did not want to remember it anymore. The narrator did not want to remember the address of Mrs. Darling, that is Marconi Street, house number 46 anymore, because the object, that is important dear students, you see here, why did the narrator want to forget the address? There is a question. So, the narrator wanted to forget the address because the objects that are linked in your memory with familiar life of former times instantly lose their value when severed from them, you see them again in strange surroundings, right? So, every object has its own, own place. Every object has its, has a particular place, right? Uh, like, uh, say, for example, home sofa has a particular place to uh, stay. Like, for example, home sofa, uh, sofa is normally kept in the drawing room, right? Uh, so, if sofa is kept somewhere else, so the sofa will lose its, uh, uh, I mean, importance or it's, it, 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 it will be, it will sound to be un, uh, out of the place. It will look out, out of the place, right? So, likewise, the narrator is saying that the objects that belong to her mother should have been in her house, okay, but they have come to Mrs. Darling's house and that too, they are inside the cupboard or inside the boxes. So these 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 objects, these these uh, household goods have lost their value because they are severed from their original location. They are separated from their original uh, uh, circumstance or original uh, location uh, in strange surroundings. Okay, strange surroundings here refers to uh, inside the cupboard or covered or inside the boxes. And what should I have done with them in a small rented room where the shreds of blackout paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of cutlery fitted in the narrow table drawer, okay? So, and moreover, she does not require them because it's a small rented room and moreover, uh, nobody's there with her. So she, and more importantly, these objects will evoke memories of her mom. That is why she decided to forget the address, forget the objects as well. So she said, I resolved to forget the address of all the things I had to forget, that would be the easiest. So dear students, uh, this lesson, uh, this lesson reminds us of another lesson that you have studied in class 10. Uh, you have studied one lesson of any Frank. Do you remember any Frank, diary of any Frank? So any Frank also lost her parents, any Frank, also had to go through similar situation, right? Uh, both of them belong to the same community, okay? Here are the narrator of this story and any friend also, okay? They both belong to Balanj, right? And their conditions were similar. You might have also uh, studied like how um, any friend also fr uh, felt very lonely. So, and any Frank, uh, you know, like this, that, that was the time when uh, the world was very, very volatile because of the war situation, second world war situation, right? So that is why it was very difficult for the people. They were going through the uh, very dreadful experience, very, very frightful experience of, uh, uh, of living uh, 
living because you know they were going through the war uh, you know the war was going on and war had a uh, lot of negative impact on human beings and moreover uh, it it, uh, it is uh, more deadly or more uh, scary because they were jews and you know they were inflicted lot of uh, uh, injustice okay and by the uh, germans uh, you can say the nazi led uh, like nazis in germany led by uh, adolf hitler right so the minority people uh, especially the jews uh, had to be uh, had to suffer a lot um, in the hands of the german rulers right okay so that is why uh, this lesson is similar to um, a diary uh, like uh, any friends diary okay uh, the same almost so let's now revise from uh, our website okay um, and then we shall wind up you see here uh, this is a hard touching story by a young girl who was the lone survivor in the family after the holocaust holocaust of world war 2 holocaust means disaster right uh, so it's a very heart touching story which is told by a uh, young girl who was the lone survivor in the family after the disaster of world war second a young girl a young jewish girl comes back to holland in search of her mother's belongings only to realize that our search does not hold any meaning or relevance anymore. Um, yes, because uh, like our mother is no more there. Therefore, she thought if she could catch a glimpse of her mother's belongings, this might be a way to pay tribute to her mom. Okay, but. Uh, uh, these belongings evoked memories of her mom, so she left them in the house of Mr. Dolly. The narrator, a young girl, knocked on the door of a house and introduced herself to the woman who opened it. Right? So the woman initially did not recognize the narrator. Right? The woman initially did not recognize the narrator. Okay. So the woman did not show any sign of recognition, but started at her, sorry, stared at her in silence. The narrator, the narrator felt that she had rung the wrong bell, but recalled having seen this woman briefly long back. So the narrator, that is the, the girl of this lesson, she, at certain stage, she thought she might have press the wrong bell, she might have come to the wrong house, but then immediately she recalled having seen this woman somewhere before. Her doubt was put to rest by the green knitted cardigan that the woman was wearing actually belonged to her mother, but all her doubt was put to rest, all her doubt was put to rest by the green cardigan which the woman was wearing and that cardigan belonged to the narrator's mother. This is how the narrator came to understand that no, she has come to the right door, she has come to the right house. It is the house which uh, she was supposed to come. So it is not a wrong door or wrong house. When the young girl asked the lady about her mother, she said that she had thought none of the people who had left had come back. The girl replied that she was the only one. So young girl inquired about her mom. Mrs. Darling became very, very surprised. She thought none of them would none of the family members of uh, the narrator would ever come back. The girl immediately replied that she was the only survivor of the Holocaust. The woman expressed her inability to help her out, although the girl insisted that she had come by train only to talk to her. On her way back to the station, she looked at the address again, which her mother had once informed her about. 
on her way back to the station on her way back to the station she looked at the address again which her mother had once informed her about it was the girl's mother who informed her about mrs darling who used to visit their place regularly and had taken something with her on every visit with the assurance that she would save all the nice things in case they had to leave she walked back to the station through familiar streets and places that she had seen for the first time after the war she had walked back she walked back to the station through familiar streets and places that she had seen for the first time after the war the streets and houses brought back precious memories of a bygone time which she wished to forget because the streets and the houses of that particular locality brought back the precious memories of the yester years or bygone days which she wished to forget because she did not want to go back to the past because lot of sweet memories are are there involved with the past but her mom is no longer there that is why she did not want to go back to the past recall the memory of the past she remembered meeting mrs darling for the first time she was walking out of their door carrying a heavy case it was at the moment when her mother had briefly introduced them both and asked her to remember the address right so the narrator remembered meeting mrs darling for the first time somewhere when her mom was alive she was walking out of their door carrying a heavy case it was at the moment when her mother had briefly introduced them both and asked her to remember the address her mom introduced mrs darling to the narrator and also asked her to remember the address where mrs darling lived the narrator was scared of coming face to face with a painful past that reminded of times which no longer existed and a people long gone by the narrator was scared of coming face to face with a painful past that reminded of times which no longer existed and of people long gone by that is why the narrator was very much scared of recalling the past or the narrator was scared of going back to the past she wanted to see her mother's belongings she wanted to see her mother's belongings touch them recollect the memories attached to them so she paid a second visit to mrs darling so the narrator paid a second visit to uh, mrs darling's house so as to just recollect the memories attached to her mom because in mrs darling's house her mother's belongings were kept mrs darling was not home and her 15 year old daughter opened the door in the second visit in her second visit uh, in the narrator's second visit mrs darling was not in her house so her 15 year old daughter opened the door the narrator found herself in the midst of things that once belonged to her mother she was distressed and aggrieved at the coarse and disorderly manner in which they were arranged right these uh, uh, household goods are not arranged in, uh, in a in proper manner in the house of mrs darling that is why the narrator became very much distressed or unhappy she was distressed and aggrieved at the coarse and disorderly manner in which they were arranged the girl brought tea and took out spoons from a box the girl brought tea and took out spoons from a box the narrator knew they were all silverware her mother had told her once she rubbed her fingers she rubbed her fingers over the woolen table cloth and remembered the burn mark on it right so woolen table cloth 
also belonged to her mother. There was a burn mark on it. It is still there. Memories came flooding back to the lone survivor of a Jewish family. Memories, memories of her mom came flooding back to the narrator. Why? Because her mother told her, introduced her, or informed her about the silverware, informed her about the tablecloth, everything. So her mom's memory came back to her. It was time for her to leave as she had a train to catch. She did not wish to wait for Mrs. Darling. At the corner of the road, she read the name plate Marconi Road. She had been to number 46, right? She had been to number 46. So she was going through, but she wanted to forget everything, not only the road, but the house, her mom's belongings, everything. The material possessions, the material possessions seemed valueless when severed from their familiar surroundings and true home. She realized that she did not need them anymore. She decided to leave the past behind and forget the address. So she decided, the narrator decided to leave the past behind and forget the address. And this is how she left the house, she left the place, and she decided not to come to the house once again, Mrs. Darling's house once again. She decided not to carry her mother's belongings anymore. So this is how the story comes to an end. So dear students, these are some of the questions from NCRT. So you can extra questions you can write down and the NCR equations you can read from the website you can prepare uh, for the examination right like here you see have you come back said the woman I thought that no one had come back. Does this statement give some clue about the story? If yes, what is it? Yes, this statement gives us indication that some event of mass migration took place some time back and the speaker was pretty confident that no one would survive the outcome of the crisis, right? This statement gives us indication that some event of mass migration would uh, some event of mass migration took place some time back. And the speaker was pretty confident that no one would survive the outcome of the crisis. So that is why she said, said this statement. If yes, what is that? Mrs. Doris, uh, was a non-Jewish acquaintance of the narrative, okay, so it should be Darling, which means a Darling, sorry, okay, please correct the spelling mistake. So, Mrs. Darling was a non Jewish acquaintance of the narrator's mother. They had known each other before the war. The narrator's entire family being the narrator's entire family being non Jewish might have been executed uh, with the exception of the Acha, this should be Jewish actually not non jewish actually say error the narrator's entire family being jewish might have been executed with the exception of the narrator who survived the war and came to catch a glimpse of her mother's belongings which were in possession of mrs Gordon. right so that is the background of the story actually so second question the story is divided into pre-war and post-war times okay Pre-war means pre-Second World War, post-Second World War means after the Second World War, pre-war means before the Second World War. What hardships do you think the girl underwent during these times? The pre-war time, the pre-war time consisted of the time when the narrator came home and found several things missing in her house. Those were times of uncertainty and fear. Mrs. Darling used to visit her house and took away belongings of her mother. 
they were always prepared to flee or face arrest by the Najis. Right. So, the pre-war time consisted of the time when the narrator came home and found several things missing in her house. Those were times of uncertainty and fear. Mrs. Darling used to visit her house and took away belongings of her mother. They were always prepared to flee or face arrest by the Nazis because they were Jews. Okay, that is why. So that was all about pre-war time when Mrs. Darling visited the narrator's house, uh, took away things from her mom, right? Um, and then post-war time was traumatic for the narrator. It was very, very traumatic. Traumatic means which was very much scary, frightening, okay, uh, for the narrator. She was the lone survivor of her family. She could not gather enough courage to face even the material possessions. She could not gather enough courage. Okay, so the narrator could not gather enough courage to face even the material possessions which remained with Mrs. Darling. Finally, when she got a chance to see every material possession, she resolved to forget the painful memories of the past. As her mother was now more alive, Therefore, she resolved to forget the belongings that were owned by her mother, right? So, dear students, the post-war time was very much scary for the narrator. Why? Because the narrator had lost her mom, right? The narrator had lost her mom. She came to see the objects that belong to her mom but those objects evoked memories of the past therefore she decided to forget the address as well as she decided to sort of uh, also leave her mom's belongings in the house of Mrs. Darling. Understood? So, dear students, that is important for you to remember. You see here, uh, as her mom was not alive, therefore she resolved to forget the belongings that were owned by her mother. Next, why did the narrator of the story want to forget the address? The narrator wanted to forget the address as the address reminds her of the past. After visiting Mrs. Darling's house for the second time, in the absence of Mrs. Darling, she could discover her mother's belongings, which Mrs. Darling took in her possession. The narrator immediately felt disappointed as the person who actually owned these things were no longer alive. It was then she realized how valueless the nice things were without her family. She thought it useless to recall the past by examining these things. Therefore, she walked out of the house resolving never to come back again. Thus, she wanted to forget the address so that the address does not cause any further pain and agony in her mind. So, dear students, that is the reason you, you know it. I have explained it many times. Okay. So, the narrator wanted to forget the address because she did not want to recall the memory of her mom. That gives her pain. Therefore, she resolved not to come ever come back to the house and also collect the belongings that belong to uh, belongings of her mom the, this is something which is very important dear students the address is a story of human predicament that follows war every war dear students you are fortunate you are born in a peaceful at a peaceful time when there is no war when the situation is very peaceful right but think of those, of those people who were born, even in India, at the uh, time of independence or before independence, right? Before independence, those who were born in India, they were subjected to a lot of uh, discrimination by the British government, a lot of torture, suffering. So you can imagine the condition of those people at that time, okay? Uh, you can imagine the condition of those people. Likewise, uh, those people who were living through the First World War and Second World War, 
they were also experience a very frightful experience so the the lesson the address is also one of uh, i mean is also uh, is also about one of those people who suffered discrimination injustice and uh, who was separated from her mom her family going to the war so war has lot of war gives way to lot of predicament misfortune loss of job loss of life loss of habitat etc let's find out this story is divided into two parts the pre war details are informed to us through the narrative of the victim girl during the pre war period mrs darling came back to the narrator's house and took away their nice things during those days the narrator and her family were always in the grip of constant fear to flee or encounter arrest by the nazis we get the glimpse of our pre war times through our memory okay it is not uh, properly described elaborately described in the story but we come to know about it through our memory the post war period is awful and pathetic as the narrator was the lone survivor of the war she was a young jewish girl in holland who became victim of world war 2 in order to get some comfort from seeing her mother's belongings which were under the custody of mrs darling she decided to pay a visit to mrs darling's house in the midst of these material objects she understood how insignificant things become when severed from the people they are associated with therefore she decided to leave the house of mrs darling and forget the address to the other all together does the story does the story very poignantly describe that trail of suffering pain and agony that war leaves behind the narrator in the story has to live with the trauma of losing her parents for the rest of her lives does the war leaves behind only regret repentance and nostalgic moment so that is important dear students the war leaves behind only regret repentance and nostalgic moments okay so this is what happened with the narrator so we all feel sympathetic with the narrator uh, because she has lost her parents uh, during this war the war has left her nothing but really um so that is what is uh, what is important for us to you know sympathize with the girl because she has become an orphan after the war and the war brings in its way all the disaster predicament and uh, repentance that is what we came to know when the girl was when the girl was recollecting the memory of her mother when the girl was recollecting the memory of her mother uh, we can understand the pain that that was that she was undergoing therefore the war leaves behind only regret repentance and nostalgic moments so dear students uh, uh, please go through uh, this information from the website okay uh, here it is given here uh, so those who are new i can tell tell you those who are new uh, they can navigate very easily just click on the home button you see this is home so you got to click on the home button go to home then click you can go either you click on get started or you go straight away to class 11 here you can see class 11 so you go to class 11 here enter now and when you press on enter now click on the enter now button you shall get all your lessons listed together right so you need to click on this for example this is address you got to click on the address and there you are it will take you to the page where you have all the materials of this lesson right so this is how dear students you got to navigate navigate to each and every lesson of uh, this of your syllabus right thank you dear students it's time for me to wind up my lecture today so before you leave kindly text me p so that i can register your presence okay so please do text me p so that i can register your presence
थैंक यू मधु आर्या मृदुला आकांक्षा भार्गवी मानसवी सानिया विनीता आर्या ओके सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स ओमकार ओके थैंक यू डियर स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज डू अपडेट योर नोटबुक ऑन अ रेगुलर बेसिस ओके प्लीज डू अपडेट इट ओके थैंक यू सो मच बाय बाय